Thank you very much, IHEED, for inviting me uh, to present the HEAT Health Education and Training Programme in Africa. Um, as Jennifer said, I'm from the Open University in the UK. We've just launched HEAT in Ethiopia with 1,000 health extension workers, and we have the ambition to reach at least 250,000 community health workers in sub-Saharan Africa over the next five years. Now, what some of you may know about the Open University is that it does have a breadth of experience in terms of distance education. And we have around 260, 265,000 students annually registered with us. And we're also making our materials, or many of our materials, available to millions through our OpenLearn platform, through YouTube, and through iTunes U. Before I came here today, I was doing some research on the other speakers and on the delegates that are sitting here. And I realized that many of you have a huge breadth of experience too, working in the field of health, community health, and also particularly in relation to mobile health. We're all very aware of the statistics. Uh, a billion people never see a health worker in their lives. And uh, Dr. Pillay very clearly outlined it again for us this morning the number of preventable, millions of preventable deaths of children and mothers every year. So many of you are working in these very exciting realms of technology and looking for solutions to try and solve some of these issues where they hurt the most. The program I'm here to outline is really, um, I would say, at a seed stage. It's very new. Um, it's not entirely conceptual because, as I said, it's already happening in Ethiopia. But because we're at the foothills, if you like, in thinking about how we can make the program more sustainable, using mHealth as an integral part of that, or no, although not the only part of that, I wanted to think about um, a place to start that would create for you a picture of what we're doing and that would leave you with um, a sense of what's possible using something like the HEAT program. What you may not know about the Open University is that as well as having so many students in the UK, we also have a funded development program run by our International Development Office. We particularly focus on Sub-Saharan Africa, although we are working as well in India, Pakistan and Bangladesh. And HEAT is based on an existing program that we've developed using open source for primary school teachers. And currently, the materials are being accessed by around about 400,000 primary teachers across nine countries in sub-Saharan Africa. What's really core to what we're doing, it's core to the TESSA program and it's core to HEAT, is that we work in partnership. And we've already heard this morning about the importance of collaboration. And we work with governments, so we are integrating the work that we're doing within national strategies, which helps towards sustainability. We work with... WHO, we work with AMREF, we work with UNICEF, and really importantly, and AMREF has been critical to this, we work with implementers on the ground. So although we're working at government level, we're also very conscious of the fact that we need to be able to work in the regions and the districts and the Waradas and the Kabelis in Ethiopia. So what is heat? Well, when I think about heat, I think about balance. It's an ambitious program. As I said, we hope to reach 250,000 community health workers in the next five years. And beyond that, I believe millions are possible to reach across the world. It's a balanced program in terms of the content. The content has been developed by, so far, Ethiopian health experts, but with support from the Open University to create it as distance education. It's balanced in terms of access. All of the content sits on the HEAT website but it's been designed to be very easily downloaded and printed. So, for example, in Ethiopia, it's all being distributed as print-based modules. There's a balance between delivery. In Ethiopia, the program is part of an upgrading program for the 31,000 health workers in communities. And the HEAT modules represent the theoretical component. WHO has worked with us to provide the practical skills training that maps against those theory modules. It's balanced in terms of its support. As I said, we work with a range of stakeholders. So we're working with ministries, but we're also working with the community health workers and leaders in the communities as well. It's about redressing balance. The original plan in Ethiopia was to take the 31,000 health workers over 20 years and upgrade them. 
by providing distance education as part of a blended approach, all of the community health workers on the project and that will be continuing to join the pilot are based in their communities and the learning is being delivered to them in their communities. So it's minimizing disruption to services. What we're also doing is we're keeping a balance in terms of respecting culture and in terms of relevance for training. These are not materials created by, oh my God, yeah, sorry about that. They're not materials created by the Open University. They're not materials created by doctors in Western countries or by doctors for other doctors. They're created by health experts specifically for community health workers. So they're completely relevant and they're contextualized. The great thing about the material is it's all open source. And so it's been designed for Ethiopia, but all the feedback we're getting from the other, other governments that we're talking with is that about 85 to 90% of it is completely generic. So very little adaptation is going to be needed to make that content relevant for other countries. There are around about 450 hours worth of learning materials. They're interactive, they're case-based approached, and they're activity-based. And they work on the assumption that many of the health workers will have no access to water, they'll have no access to electricity. So they really take into account the context in which those health workers are working and living. We had seed funding from a private trust in the UK. I went to them with the idea, so no M&E, no kind of evidence that this was going to work, and I kind of pitched to them and they went, okay, you can have a quarter of a million pounds, Leslie Ann, see what you can do with that. So then it was like, oh my God, I've got the money, now I have to do something. But we'd been invited by the Ministry of Health in Ethiopia to come and think through this solution with them about how to scale up at speed with quality materials, their health workers. So we talked a bit with UNICEF and we talked with AMREF and Ted Chaban, bless him, the, the UNICEF representative, when he got the project and he realized it was going to be freely available, he said, so how much do you need? And we were like, four million? He went, fine, you've got it. You should have asked for eight, but never mind, lesson learned. So what's different about this program? There are, as Dr. Pillay said this morning, lots of projects, tons, hundreds, thousands. I was in an e-learning conference in Tanzania last week and amazing projects are going on with 50 people here, 20 people there, lasting two years here, lasting three years there. So they're kind of boutique projects. So what's different about HEAT? It's partly about the authoring, which I mentioned, that it's done by local experts, and so it's entirely relevant to people that are using the materials. It's open educational resource, so it's inclusive. It's distance education, so it minimizes disruption to the delivery of health services. And we believe that it has the potential to be policy changing because it's getting governments and working with governments to think about ways to deliver critical health education for access, for retention, for motivation, and to deliver the services where they're needed the most. So when I was thinking about the characteristics of HEAT, I came up with this tree idea to represent growth and diversity and scale. And scale is a word that we've heard used several times already this morning, including by myself, because actually that's what's important. It's about reaching hundreds of thousands, not just about hundreds of health workers. It's about being able to deliver a program at speed, not 20 years by taking people into residential accommodation and training them there. It's about being able to deliver within the space of a few years and to rapidly scale up across a country, across a nation, across a region. It's about being sustainable because we're working with governments, because we're helping them think through their national health strategy and how we can support that. This is a program that's going to last way beyond the Open University being involved, way beyond our funding being involved. And what's really important too is that it's quality, it's high standard. And that combination of scale, speed, sustainability and quality is something that we believe makes the HEAT program very special. But the reason I'm here today, finally I get to it, is because we're talking about mHealth. When I was searching the mHealth community over the last few months regarding what's been achieved, I've been astonished by the capacity about what's possible. I mean, I feel quite cool because I have an iPhone. I barely know how to use the thing. I go out into Ethiopia, I go out into Zambia, I'm going to Rwanda next month, and I know some of the community health workers have phones, some don't, they're very unsophisticated. 
So I've been really trying to think, how can we use even the most unsophisticated device to actually make a difference and to bring M Health in as part of the strand, part of the strategy for the HEAT program? Clearly, we've already heard about how mobile phones can be used to capture data, and that's a key part of what we'd like to do for HEAT, uh, not least in terms of capturing data for our M&E strategy. There's also the role of mobile technology in relation to information delivery, which we've also heard about this morning. But one of the key areas that we see as potentially real and very realistic is in terms of mobile technology for support. The HEAT training program ultimately is a community of frontline health workers coming together to learn from the materials and from each other. So we believe that mobile technology is something about making sense of a supportive community it's about encouraging our health workers, our students, in their studies, but also student to student, student to tutor, and also tutor to tutor, because on distance learning programs, not only the students can feel isolated from time to time, so can the tutors. So for this, um, it feels like a very real opportunity for HEAT to begin at those kind of foothills of M Health is using the mobile phone as a support uh, tool for our health workers and for their tutors. We recognize in the HEAT team that there's an enormous amount of technological expertise out there, and actually there's a huge amount just in this room. So we see an enormous opportunity for HEAT. And what we'd really like to think about doing is, and I'm here today to present you with an opportunity, is how we can open doors for collaboration. We've had great conversations already with IHEAT about how we can help to support the absolutely fantastic ambitions that they have for their program of work. Of course, we're looking for funding. Everybody's always looking for funding. But actually, what we're really looking for are partners, people who can collaborate with HEAT and help us think through solutions and help us make an even more scalable and sustainable difference than we already are. Ultimately, we believe that HEAT has the potential to save hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of lives over the course of the program. I've talked to you about the program in Africa, we're also in discussion with governments in India, China, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and South America. I'm in discussion with a number of donors so that we can translate the materials into other languages. Currently, they're, they're only in English, but uh, as with our TESA, our teacher program, we'd like to look at translating the materials into four or five other languages. So we believe that with the implementation of a rigorous M Health strategy, that he can reach more people more effectively and more sustainably. So if you'd like to talk with me um, during the course of today about how we can make heat a mobile revolution as well as an online e-learning and print revolution, then I would be very pleased uh, to talk with you. Thank you for listening.